Hello everybody. We've been talking about fall protection and fall related injuries in class and one of the things we've discussed is how it's the pressure exerted on the body from a fall that causes the injury. Um, if we can control the pressure, we can control the injury. Preferably we prevent the fall, prevent any pressure on the body. Uh, but it's all about controlling the pressure, more so than it is the force. Force is part of pressure, as we see here in, in the formula. Force is part of pressure, but it's the way that force is distributed over a wider area that determines how damaging it is. These are some examples of pressures and what they can do to different parts of the body. It takes 1,700 pounds per square inch to break a femur. Femur, the upper leg, is the strongest bone in the body. It's really amazing that it, how strong it is. It's very hard to break a femur. The skull also is very durable. It's very hard to crack a skull. But the forces in a fall can result in pressures far greater than 1,700 PSI or 1,100 PSI. Pressure from a fall can be astronomical as you'll see when you do some of your practice problems uh, and that's why we're doing this video something you can go back to to look at when you're working on your practice problems we've already covered this in class uh, but again we have bones like the femur and the skull uh, capsule that's very durable but then we also have bones like the clavicle that's not as durable it only takes 2500 pounds per square inch on average to fracture a clavicle which is your collarbone there's also the potential for organ damage resulting from the pressures exerted on the body. Um, your organs inside of your, your torso, when you fall, those, those organs are bouncing around, bouncing up against the sternum, against the ribs. As they're bouncing around inside the sternum, you know, they're not as tough as bone. They can be damaged. They can be ruptured as a result of the fall uh, incident. Also your brain, it's encased in the skull, but when a fall occurs, it doesn't keep the brain from bouncing against the inside of the skull, which that's what a concussion is basically. The brain hits the inside of the skull, uh, the brain is bruised from that impact, but it can be far worse than just a concussion. Uh, the skull may not be broken because it takes 1100 PSI to break a skull, but the the brain can be mangled from the pressures and the pressures that impact the brain as it bounces around inside the skull. Again, it's all about pressure. If we can control the pressure, we can control the, the damage. Um, pressure is a function of the velocity of the falling object, how fast the object is moving uh, as it falls, or how fast in particular is it moving when it makes impact with the solid object. Also, pressure is a function of deceleration distance. Uh, how, how well the surface absorbs the fall. A hard surface like concrete doesn't absorb, absorb the fall. There's very low deceleration distance, very high pressure, very high por forces. Now, if you fall, if you fell on a fall mat designed to protect people from falling, then the deceleration distance is going to be greater, the forces are going to be less, and the pressure is going to be less. So you're less likely to have an injury if you fall on a soft surface. Uh, an example would be falling into a muddy river. Uh, one of my experiences has to do with a worker that fell 30 feet into a muddy river. He, he got up, walked away. He was wet for the rest of the day because he didn't have a change of clothes, but the fall didn't hurt him because the water and the mud protected him. That increased his deceleration distance. It gave him a soft place to fall, so to speak. So greater deceleration distance, less pressure, less injury. Um, pressure is a function of the impact force. The greater the force, the greater the, greater the pressure, but it's force uh, spread out across a particular contact point or impact area. The larger the impact area, the less pressure will be exerted on the body. If the force is concentrated in a small area, the pressure is going to be greater. The impact area is smaller and the pressure is going to be greater. 
Now there's some other variables involved. Um, the weight of the worker is an important variable. Heavier the worker, that's going to impact the forces involved as well. Heavier workers are more likely to be injured in a fall than a lighter worker. Uh, well, let's go ahead and, and talk about uh, the calculation of pressure. Uh, and here's our, our sample problem that we're going to work through. We have a 170 pound worker who falls 96 feet from a bridge deck. And you know, that's about middle of the road for bridge construction. Many bridges are a lot less than 96 feet, but then you have bridges that are hundreds of feet in the air above the lower level. So this is kind of a middle value, uh, 96 feet from a bridge deck. He lands on his hip on soft, muddy ground. So he's fortunate in that regard. The contact area, that's the area of his body, the size of his, the area on his body that makes contact with the surface that he lands on is eight inches by eight inches. The deceleration distance is one foot, which is very good. I mean, he's actually, he's actually having some shock absorption work to his benefit. And that's because of the muddy ground. If that was concrete, the deceleration distance may have been a half inch or an inch at best. Or, or hard enough surface, there's really not any deceleration distance. I mean, splat, you're gone. You're, and that's when the pressures are highest. But with this information, what is the pressure per square inch exerted on the worker? That's what we want to know. Um, just a second. There we go. Now here's the formula for pressure. Uh, pressure equals force divided by area. And areas are impact area in square inches because we're, we're calculating pounds per square inch pressure. But to calculate pressure, we need to know the force. We don't know the force. So before we can calculate pressure, we have to calculate the force. And here's the formula for force. Um, w is the weight of the object, in this case a worker that weighs 170 pounds. Uh, G is a constant, the acceleration of gravity, 32.2 feet per second every second. Uh, but there's another number that we don't have that we're going to have to calculate. That is A, the rate of deceleration. And here is the formula for the rate of deceleration. We need velocity, which we don't have. And actually, we have everything else, but V, velocity, impact velocity, we don't have. We're going to calculate that. Now, we do have D, the rate or the deceleration distance, and 2 is a constant. But we need velocity. And here's the formula for velocity. Actually, I'm going to show you a different formula. I'm going to, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Um, when we when we get to actually working out the problem but this is the formula for velocity v is velocity v sub zero in this formula is initial velocity g is the acceleration of gravity the constant 32.2 and s is our fall distance so what we need to do to calculate pressure is we need to go all the way back to velocity and start there and then calculate through a series of, of calculations to get to pressure that's what we want to do now with this problem. Okay. Impact velocity is our first step. And here's a formula that we can use. But I recommend that when you work this out, you start right here. Because what we're doing, let me see, let me go back. I got a little bit premature. And what we got here, we got in the first level, we got velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus 2gs. Okay, we're not, we're not trying to calculate velocity squared. We need to change that velocity squared into velocity. The way we do that is take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of both sides, that velocity squared becomes just simple velocity but then we have the term on the right inside the square root sign, or inside of the square root. We take the square root of the other side of the formula. So like I said before, 
start here. You don't have to go through all this. When you're writing out your problem to solve it, just start with velocity equals the square root of, of the initial velocity squared plus 2gs. And again, uh, g is the constant, s is your fall distance, this is your initial velocity, which I need to say a little bit more about initial velocity. Again, we're talking about um, an object that has no initial velocity. The initial velocity is zero. So we're going to go ahead and plug in zero here for initial velocity. And then for the other variables, we're going to plug in the, the appropriate values there as well. 32.2 for g, acceleration of gravity. Then for our distance, 96 feet. Plug that in. Down to our next iteration. Once we have all of our numbers plugged in, we start doing some mathematics. We multiply everything out. When we multiply 2 times 32.2 plus 96, it comes out to 6,182.4. Now, 0 squared is 0. So when we add 0 to 6182.4, we end up with 6182.4. We need to take the square root of this value. When we take the square root, my pen likes to do this to me. I apologize. There we go. When we take the square root of 6182.4, our velocity, this is how fast the, the, the worker is traveling when he hits the ground. Uh, 78.6 feet per second is his velocity. And now that we have the velocity, we can use that to calculate the rate of deceleration. Again, with each of these calculations, we're getting closer and closer to the pressure that we, we really want to know, the pressure per square inch. And let's go ahead and take a look at uh, rate of deceleration calculation. Velocity squared divided by 2 times d. d is a deceleration distance. We have our velocity now, so we plug that in at 78.6. We plug in our deceleration distance, which is 1, 1 foot, which again is a very good deceleration distance. That's good for the worker. Plug that in. Now we square 78.6, 61.82.4. Um, and you're probably seeing a shortcut we, we could have taken uh, with that 6182.4. But if you saw it, great. If you didn't, fine. Just do it this way. Uh, 6182.4. 2 times 1 is 2. So we divide 6182.4 divided by 2. That gives us a rate of deceleration of 3,091.2 feet per second. Now we can use this to calculate the impact force. We take just 3,091.2 to calculate the impact force. And here's the formula for impact force. We've got the worker's weight or the object weight. Rate of acceleration is A. And then we've got our gravitational constant, 32.2. Again, weight of the object. In this case, it's a worker. That weighs 170 pounds. So we go ahead and plug in the 170 pounds for the weight of the worker, the 3,091.2 for the rate of deceleration, which we calculated on the previous slide. We plug in 32.2 for the rate of deceleration. Uh, multiply 170 times 3,091.2. And when we multiply 170, times 3,091.2, it comes out to 525,504. Go ahead and bring the 32.2 down. Now all we need to do to find the impact force is divide 525,504, divided by, divide that by 32.2, and there is our impact force, 16,000 uh, 320 pounds of force when the worker falls 96 feet uh, or I should say when a 170 pound worker falls 96 feet and lands in muddy ground where the deceleration distance is one foot. But it's again it's the pressure that matters. 
that force could be distributed across the wide area. If he lands flat on his back, the pressure won't be as great and he may be less likely to be injured or severely injured if this force is evenly distributed. But if the force is directed at a small area of his body, the pressure increases and he's more likely to suffer serious injury. So we've got this, now we can calculate the pressure. Impact force, let's calculate the impact pressure. Pressure equals force divided by area. Plug in the force calculated in the previous slide, 16,320. The area is eight inches by eight inches. So go ahead and calculate the square inches. Eight times eight is 64, so there's 64 square inches. Divide the force, 16,320, by 64 square inches. And the pressure on the worker's body is 255 pounds per square inch. Yeah, this is pressure enough to break bones and cause internal organ damage, injury to internal organs. But it is a survivable fall because he landed on muddy ground with a one foot deceleration distance. If the worker had fallen on a hard surface like concrete or compacted soil, it would have been much worse. Also, if the worker had been heavier, that would have caused the pressure to be greater. That would have caused the forces to be greater, which would have caused the pressures uh, to be greater. Also, if this contact area, and I don't have this on the slide, but if that contact area was smaller and all this force was concentrated in, say, a uh, two or three inch, two or three square inch area, the pressure is going to increase dramatically. All right, well, that's just a quick run through of one example of how to calculate pressure. There's another video available. In that video, I actually write out the calculation. Instead of showing everything to you on a PowerPoint slide, I actually write it out like I would if I was doing this problem. Um, and like you, you will do when you're when you're doing the practice problems. Now, after you, after you work out the practice problems, then you need to go to the impact pressure quiz. There are six questions based upon these three problems. Two questions for each problem. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, remember, video tutorials are available as you're watching a video. I guess you know that. So I have this in there for when I cover it in class. So, all right, you guys have a good evening. It's getting late. I will see you in class. Bye.